What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about some of the new features that are coming up in the next version of SketchUp. Um, this is definitely a conversation video, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think about these as well. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so a couple weeks ago, I went down to SketchUp's 3D Base Camp in Las Vegas, and um, they gave a really interesting keynote about some of the upcoming features in SketchUp. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna talk about what I think is the biggest and best new feature that's gonna be coming in an upcoming version of SketchUp. The first thing I will say is this was a little bit odd and a little bit different from the way they've done things before. They're being a lot more open about features that they're working on, like this this um, presentation, for example, was very much like, uh, hey, these are features that are coming up, not, hey, these are features that we're releasing right now. So I will say, I don't know when these are coming to an official release of SketchUp. Um, they might be in SketchUp 2025. They might be later on. Um, but it sounds like a lot of them are in kind of the uh, SketchUp early access program right now. So um, I'm not sure when some of these are coming, which is a little bit of a departure from what we've seen in the past, which was just kind of talking about um, features that were already in the released version of SketchUp. And so first off, we had a couple different features having to do with the collaboration engine that they're building inside of SketchUp. And so basically what's happening with the collaboration engine is they've built it so that you can generate a link and share a SketchUp model um, and everyone can kind of enter the model as a viewer. Um, and so what they've done is they've set it up where multiple different people can be inside of a SketchUp model and they can uh, leave comments and do some other things as well. One of the features that they demoed was a feature that kind of like live shares across multiple different devices. So like an iPad, the web version, uh, the desktop version, and you can kind of lock everything in and everyone kind of sees the same thing at once. It's kind of a presentation mode. So to me, I wasn't really sure when I would use this. I mean, if I was presenting a SketchUp model, I would probably just share my screen and share the SketchUp model in a Zoom link or a Teams link. So to me, this is kind of one of those, I'm not 100% sure when this use case would actually be used. So if you can think of a time when you would rather share the actual SketchUp model, have multiple people inside of the model, but just kind of like watching um, the 3D movement, I'd love to hear about it. So that one to me was uh, probably the least exciting thing just because I don't know how that would fit into a workflow. <clears throat> so there's also going to be a mode, um, which is kind of a collaboration mode where multiple people can be in the model at once and you can kind of see them. So it's kind of like working in um, whether you've got a shared document like Microsoft SharePoint or if you've got like a shared Google Doc or something like that, and you can kind of see where everyone else is. It's like that for SketchUp, and it also has the ability to add comments in different areas. So you can have like a list of notes off to the side, things like that. I could see that being helpful for like model reviews across a team or something like that. Um, I could even maybe see that being used with clients where the clients could fly around and leave notes. Um, I'm not sure inside of a workflow of sharing with clients if designers are always gonna want that, but I think it's a good option to have and you can use the model as kind of like a checklist of things to fix or change. So from that standpoint, I think that's gonna be a useful feature. Okay, so next up is improvements to SketchUp Diffusion. This is something I think we've all kind of seen coming and I think it's just gonna be an iterative improvement moving forward. So obviously AI rendering has had its limitations and it continues to have its limitations. One of the biggest problems with AI rendering right now is the, the liberties that it takes with what's actually in your model, right? Like it'll take what's in your model and it'll change that fairly significantly. And uh, Mike Todros talked a little bit about how they're trying to improve improve the diffusion engine so that it respects the materials and other things that are existing in your model. Um, and I think that's definitely a good improvement. I think that's something that's gonna improve as the model improves moving forward. So I do think we're gonna start seeing better AI renders. Um, my problem with this um, is more having to do with AI rendering in general. So like this is a great example, right? If you take a look at this, um, he shows kind of an older version of what they were rendering before, right? And so you can take this and it renders something out that looks close, but in this example, what it does is it, re it here's your old rendered image, 
right here. So this is what Diffusion was giving you before. And then if you look at the new version, you know, um, it's giving you another version that's that's a lot closer to your original model, right? If you look at this one over here on the left hand side, you can see that um, now your fins are kind of being respected and things like that. My issue with AI rendering continues to be that it changes your design. Um, and this isn't limited to SketchUp, this is just in general. Like if you look at this model, for example, you look at this, if you really pay attention to detail on this and you look at this, this model has like a second floor floor right here, right? So you've got a lower floor and then an upper floor. Well, if you look at this, this is generating floors every mullion across here. So it's changing that design. It's not actually putting in the design that you had and generating an image from it, it's changing it. So I, I just, I'm still not seeing how, other than ideation, how we can use this unless we're improving renders that we create, right? So another thing is if you look at this planner here, um, and I guess it's not like significantly changing the planner design, but it is changing the planner design as well. So things are being changed in here. That's just something that AI render is doing and until we can tell it hey take my exact design and make an exact rendering of that I don't see how we use it beyond ideation and maybe other people are using it in a different way I don't know but just in my opinion right now um, the diffusion style of modeling just currently has some limitations. Now they did demo some cool tools where you can go in here and kind of make some adjustments. Let me see if I can find those right here. So basically the way that this works is say that it renders something out, right? So it runs diffusion and um, it creates a render like this. Well, on the SketchUp for iPad version, you've got the ability to kind of sketch and draw over top of a part of the model and you can tell it to exclude different things or add different things. So the demo they showed was, and I'm not sure where it went, ah, here it is. Um, so the demo they showed is you can draw in here with the Apple Pencil and you can tell it to regenerate something in um, this particular area right here. So um, being able to edit and adjust like certain parts of your model, I think definitely moves this forward to a certain degree. So I do think there's gonna be interesting things that happen with this. He also showed a demo where you were able to sketch on here like a pool or something like that. And then this could add in an image of a pool. So I, I think being able to give the AI additional direction and have it kind of like, kind of like, um, change and adjust the model itself or the rendering itself based on your direction I think is a good thing. But I do think these tools are somewhat limited from a practical standpoint beyond ideation, at least at this point. Okay, and so next up, they talked about some more AI tools for SketchUp, which I think are interesting, that are gonna live inside of this thing called SketchUp Assistant. SketchUp Assistant is basically an AI agent that lives inside of SketchUp that can do different things. There's actually multiple different agents. I'm not sure exactly how it's broken up because obviously I'm just seeing what's on the screen here. But um, for example, they demoed things like, uh, like being able to upload some different data about different spaces, and this could auto-generate spaces in 3D in SketchUp, which I thought was really interesting. But you can kind of see it here. Um, so you've got kind of these different buttons in here and they allow you to access different AI agents and tools. So um, there's one in here for searching the 3D warehouse. There's one in here for working with RubyScript, which was interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. But basically the concept is there's multiple different AI agents that live within SketchUp that can do different things. So the first one I wanna talk about is the Ruby agent. And so what the Ruby agent was is it's a tool that's based basically designed to help you write little Ruby scripts. So you can basically say, hey, create a plugin that does this. And they demoed a plugin that creates arrays, but it basically generates that for you. It's been kind of trained on Ruby scripting and things like that. Um, so I think this is interesting for simple functions. Um, so like for example, you know, an array function or something like that, or write an extension that like drops a bunch of things on points or whatever. I think that's actually super interesting. I think we're gonna get to the point where you just ask it to do that that and you don't have to tell it to write a script, but being able to create your own tools in SketchUp with a tool like this that kind of automates that is interesting to me. I don't think it's the game changer that everyone thinks that it's going to be though, because so much of this is workflow 
driven. And in the coming weeks, I'm hoping to uh, do a demo of that new lands Landshape extension, which is basically an extension for, it, it's like sandbox tools, but way better. Um, and it's for creating terrain. Well, there are so many tools in there that are built around a workflow. I don't think this replaces developers, right? Because I think in a lot of cases, people find use cases based on tools that people generate, not the other way around. So like, for example, there's a ton of things that I do with Profile Builder that I never would have done unless I got this really well thought out tool from a developer. So I don't think people are gonna be going through and creating, like, like some people will, but the vast majority of people I don't think are gonna be creating really robust tools using AI agents or anything like that. I think they're still gonna be looking to developers and what the developers are gonna do is they're gonna be spending much more time on workflow than they are on code. So that would be my suspicion, I'd love to hear what you think about the future of that um, because it is really interesting, but I, I don't think it's going to be the earth shattering thing where it replaces all developers or anything like that. And so another agent they showed is the 3D warehouse agent. So what the 3D air warehouse agent does is it's really good at finding things in the 3D warehouse. It's basically an AI powered um, 3D warehouse search. This I think is going to be super powerful um, and maybe not for the reasons that everyone thinks. So one of the cool things that uh, he demoed was going through and searching for variations of a, of a certain kind of model thing, right? Like planters or something like that. Now, one of the things he demoed is you can also tell the AI agent to place them in your motto, model automatically. I don't necessarily know that a lot of people are going to want this because I don't necessarily need it to put things in the model. I just need to find the things that I need to add in the model, which I think this could be really good for. So I think from searchability and improving your ability in the 3D warehouse to find things, uh, this could be massively helpful, but I'm not 100% sure that I like or want the auto placement in my model because that's what the design process is, right? Like I wanna figure out where those things go, like that's kind of my job. And at this point, like we can have that discussion if AI gets really good at it, but right now I don't think AI in general is super good at auto placing things. So it feels like just a little bit more work to go through and fix and put it in there the way that it needs to be based on context. That being said, a 3D warehouse agent, I think is going to be super helpful for finding the things that we need in the 3D warehouse. Okay, so the overall agent itself, I think as it gets more powerful, is gonna be something that people use a lot. There were multiple different demos he showed of just the AI agent and how you can ask it to do different things. Like he uploaded a CSV file um, and then used the CSV file to generate space plans, which he then asked to uh, be created in 3D as kind of blocks inside a SketchUp. That was interesting to me, but again, space planning has so much to do with the way that spaces interact. I just don't see how AI as it currently is can replace that entire process. But I think what AI is good for is automating things that we don't necessarily want to or need to do. And so there were two use cases for this that I found really interesting. One was he showed uploading a floor plan and using the AI agent to start generating walls from that floor plan image. So basically automating the process of going through and adding all of the walls on those points, um, which I think could be extremely powerful. And again, it's just eliminating some of the the kind of monotonous work that goes along with the design process. So um, I thought that was definitely an interesting application. Um, it did look like there's still some things being worked on based on the image that I saw on the screen, but that's definitely interesting to me. Um, I do think we're getting to a point where creating things like walls and things like that will be automated, but based on designs and floor plans that we generate. The other thing that he showed, which is interesting, is he uploaded a mood board image to SketchUp, um, SketchUp Assistant. And what it did is it took that mood board image, it went and found assets from the 3D warehouse that matched the mood board image and brought them into the model and automatically placed them. And again, I talked about how I feel about the automatic placement, but it's still interesting even if it can get things close, but not only did it go through and generate all of those things, it also generated colors based on the mood board as well and put them into the end model section of the library so that you could apply them two walls. So I think again, for the automation of go out and get all the things that I need so that I can create a model, I think this could be extremely 
powerful. So definitely going to be following this one with interest. I don't know when it's going to be out, but I do think there are some cool things that are happening in here. I do not think it is the sky is falling. Um, designers are being replaced or anything like that. I think like anything else, this is going to be a tool that allows people to focus more on design and less on technical things. All right. And then finally, we've got the feature that I am the most excited about and I think is really interesting. It's the PBR rendering inside of SketchUp. So basically this is a rendered view that actually creates a 3D rendering based on PBR materials and lighting inside of SketchUp. So it looks like it lives as another tab where um, it's basically a style that you click on. You click on photorealistic rendering and it's actually going to render this out. This has the ability to add HDRI images to your models for lighting as well as adjusting the sunlight it looks like. Um, so you're going to have the ability to adjust the light as well as the ability to create those realistic PBR materials. And it looks like there's slots in there for the various maps. So things like, uh, things like there it is right there. Uh, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. So we've got things like, come on, there we go. Nope. A little further. There we go. So it's got slots for metalness. It's got slots for roughness. It's got slots for normal maps. So you can apply all of those maps inside of SketchUp and create a PBR rendering, which I think is extremely exciting. Being able to do that inside of SketchUp. Now, just looking at the results that I'm seeing on the screen right now, so you can see how they kind of add some of those maps in here. Click on OK. I think this is, when, when I see this, this is more of like a two and a half or uh, not two and a half D, but a um, three quarter rendering. So what I mean is you're definitely getting reflections and other things like that, but I don't see this as a replacement for like a D5 render, at least based on the results that I'm seeing in here. I see this as more of a tool for adding a little bit more realism and almost like stylized renderings. One of the things I like about it is I think you can stack like the uh, ambient occlusion and other things like that. So I think you're gonna be able to generate results in SketchUp that you previously had to take to like Photoshop or something like that. So I think this is an excellent supplement. Uh, one of the things he talked about is they're going to have PBR materials to download in the 3D warehouse. So instead of shipping with a bunch of PBR materials, um, you're going to be able to open those up in the 3D warehouse and then bring them down into your library. And so one other feature that I really like that I think fits in with how AI should be used was something that Mike Todro showed, which was the ability to bring in an image as a texture. And then you can click on the little AI generate button it goes through and it generates all of the PBR maps from an image and it also automatically makes the texture seamless inside of SketchUp. So that I think is a perfect use for AI because it takes the process of generating PBR maps yourself and making things seamless and running them through like a materialize or something like that. It just does it all for you. So now you can bring in an image and you can spend more time finding the textures, finding the materials that you like and using the AI functions to set up SketchUp to display them. So that I think is a feature that I'm really excited about as well because it really does automate processes where they should be automated. So next week I'm planning on putting out a video uh, talking about I think what should be added in future versions of SketchUp. I think this is an interesting change because there's a little more openness to what's being developed than we've seen from a Trimble and SketchUp in the past, um, which I think is a good thing. Um, the, the release method of announcing all of this at 3D where, at a 3D base camp and then not having the new version out is a little bit odd to me, but I think this is a move in the right direction. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about these new features? What are you excited about? What are you worried about? I just love having that conversation you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.